Good morning, my name is Michelle and this is Abby and welcome back to our channel. So today on our walk and talk with me, I wanted to talk about a couple things. First thing is what it means to have a high energy dog. Everybody wants a beautiful Labrador Retriever, Belgian Malinois, Cane Corso, German Shepherd, all these beautiful Huskies, high energy dogs, but a lot of people don't recognize what that means. And that's why we have a lot of those dogs in you know shelters they get released to shelters because the owners can't handle the pressure basically but what i'm talking about is you know these dogs require a lot of mental and physical stimulation and if you don't have a giant yard with i don't know goose and goats for your border collie you're gonna have to find a better way to deal with all that excess energy so at minimum, Abby is a standard poodle. Not the super highest energy dog in the world. There are many dogs that are more high energy, but she still requires a fair bit of energy, expenditure, exercise, and training to be happy. So what happens when you don't do these things? You have a dog that is destructive in your house. Oh. <laughs> Hi. Destructive in your house, tearing up your stuff, and Honestly, they're just releasing this energy in less than desirable ways, but they don't know that they're a dog. So really research the breed you are going to get and not only just research, but be honest with yourself. Do you have the time to take your German Shepherd on two hour walks a day? Do you have the energy for that? A lot of people don't and they go into these you know, bringing in these animals into their family that they really don't have the time, energy, or desire to exercise, train, and engage with them. And honestly, if you don't want to walk a dog, you should probably get a cat, regardless of the breed that you get as far as dogs go. Um, so that's just my little rant <laughs> on large, high energy broad breeds. If you really don't have the energy to deal with them you probably should leave them for someone else even if they are beautiful and amazing um, animals my th second thing i'm going to be talking about today is letting your dog off leash i see a lot of people with dogs off leash all the time and it bothers me especially when we were walking on leash when she was a puppy and a lot more shy the dogs would just come and run up to her on leash and i'd be like dude what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? So there are a few things that I do when I have my dog off leash. If you're gonna take your dog off leash for the first time, I uh, encourage you to get into a enclosed area where you know they are secure. Um, so that you can do a couple things. First thing is release the dog to play. So what does that mean? Have a dog sit. I sometimes have her sit on leash wait till she I take off the leash and then give her her release cue or I have her sit at the door of the tiny home before I let her out the door is open she waits and then she's released that gives her the idea that hey it's important to listen while we're in this environment sit good girl Good girl. Okay. Second thing to do is to test your recall. Abby, come. Yes, good girl. Sit. <laughs> good girl. Yeah. Okay, go get it. <laughs> I rewarded her with the ball that time. Oh my gosh, she fell. Good baby, yeah! <laughs> but you test your recall. You need a strong recall if you're gonna have your dog off leash, running around, especially in an unclosed area. We have a rule. If I call her and she does not come to me, that means all gains, all expenditures stop in that moment. She goes right back on leash and we go right back into the van, into her home, into the crate, whatever. So. 
really make sure you proof your recall, you train it, you proof it, and it's reliable in new environments. Because if it's not, that's just a danger hazard for you and your dog. Um, you might or may not be able to tell, but it's raining here. And even though it's raining, regardless of what the weather is doing, we are out making sure that we both are getting the mental and stimulation that we need to be confident, happy members of society. <laughs> um, so first thing is have them wait to be released for the recall. Next thing is test, not the recall, to be released to play. Next thing is to test the recall. Make sure it's reliable in this environment so that we can keep each other safe. And last thing is to let a dog be a dog. Right, you're a dog. <laughs> let her walk around, sniff, playing some puddles maybe. Well, that's what she's doing. I don't know if I like that, but she likes it. So that's what we're gonna do. So she's being a little crazy right now. You can't see it. Well, you could see it. She just grabbed the leash. So, oh gosh, I'm going to Divert her attention. Good. Sit. Yes. And I'm going to ask her for some behaviors. Down. Good girl. Okay, come. Yes. And I'm going to get some love. Good girl. Sit. So obviously she wanted my attention. Okay, come. Yes, sit. Good girl. And I want to teach her that jumping and nipping is not the way to get my attention. <laughs> Good girl. Oops. I ignore her when she's doing the jumping thing. And hopefully she chooses the right behavior. Oops. To get my attention. Oops. Good girl. Hey. And then that's how I do that when I, you know, she's starting to act out. Basically is that I'm not giving her the attention she is wanting or needs, but that's not how you get attention. You don't jump up and expect me to give you attention. You <laughs> request it by sitting calmly and being a responsible canine citizen. But she's still a puppy, you know, we're still learning. We're still figuring it out. And right now she's not behaving because I'm ignoring her. However, we're gonna be better soon. <laughs> but thanks for joining us on this walk. Um, yeah, thanks for listening to my rant about, you know, high energy dogs, what it really takes to have a high energy dog. And when they're not stimulated physically and mentally, all the challenges that people can face with owning a high energy dog. Um, and then having some rules. When you're out and about, letting the dog explore, just making sure you're keeping your dog accountable. Having them sit and wait to be released for an adventure, testing your recall, and then letting the dog explore, be a dog. Abby, come. Yes, good girl. Good girl, sit. Yeah, who's a good puppy? Yeah, okay, go get it. Yeah, hope you guys enjoy. See you guys next time.